Hi, I'm Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm a specialist in the Old Norse language currently teaching at the University of California, Berkeley, previously at UCLA, and as of August 2017, very happy to report that I'll be moving to the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm back today with another one of my videos about a topic in Norse language and myth, and in this video I'm going to continue my recent series of videos about a single poem in the Poetic Edda. So previously I've done videos on the poem Volespo, the poem Hovamol, the poem Horvarsljod, and the poem Lokasena, and today I'm adding a fifth video of the series about Grimnismol. Grimnismol is the fourth poem in order in the Codex Regius, the manuscript in which most of the poems of the Poetic Edda are preserved. Grimnismol is important not only for its interesting frame story about Odin, but also for the wealth of mythological information that Odin says in the course of the poem, which informs much of the sort of background of what we know about the worlds and settings of Norse myth. Snorri Sturluson, in writing his prose Edda, used Grimnismal extensively to uh, add details and flesh out uh, things about the stories that he tells. Of course, we don't always know that Snorri interprets things perfectly right, but he does help us understand some of the hints that we get in Grimnismal. In this video, I will talk about Grimnismal as well as read from it in Old Norse and in English. The English translations will come from my own translation of the Poetic Edda, which was published in 2015 by Hecate Publishing Company and is easily available. My translation is the first to render these poems in contemporary English as interpreted by an expert in the Old Norse language who also has experience as a modern language poet. The Old Norse readings that I do will be in Old Norse medieval pronunciation, not in modern Icelandic pronunciation. I do know the difference and it's a conscious choice, not just me screwing it up. I teach Old Norse and modern Icelandic and I have a video about modern Icelandic pronunciation, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that, as well as about the differences between Old Norse and modern Icelandic. I'll post links to these videos and annotations that you'll see on the screen if you're not on a mobile device or if you don't have certain ad blockers. Those links will also be in the video description below. For those who have annotations, I'll also post some of the text that I read on annotations on the screen. So Grimnismal begins with like many other poems in the Poetic Edda, a prose preface that sort of sets the stage for what we're going to encounter in the poem. Grimnismol tells us that there were two sons of a king. And these two sons were named Gerdr and Agnar. And one day they went out fishing and they got stranded on an island. And on this island was an old couple, an old man and an old woman, who took them in and raised them. The old man, raised Gerdr, the old woman raised Agnar, and it turns out the old man was in fact Odin in disguise, just as the old woman was Hrig, Odin's wife in disguise. Once the boys had grown up, they built a boat and rowed back to their own homeland, but once they got back home, Gerdr jumped out on shore, shoved the boat back into the water, and said to Agnar, go where the trolls take you, which is a terrible curse in Old Norse. And Gerther became king, while Agnar did in fact go where the trolls took him, and wound up living in a cave with a troll woman. So a little bit later we read that Odin and Hrig are sitting in Oskarder, the home of the gods, and Hrig and Odin are talking about these two boys that they fostered. And Odin boasts that the boy that he fostered, Gerther, is now a king, while the boy that Hrig fostered, Agnar, is sleeping with a troll woman and raising troll kids in a cave. And Hrig says, well, that may be, but Gerrithr is inhospitable to his guests. Now, hospitality is a central tenet of Old Norse culture, as we've encountered, for instance, in the poem Halvamal and in many sagas. And so Odin is not going to take this slander sitting down. He says he's going to go down and test Gerrithr's hospitality. So Hrig sends one of her attending women, the minor goddess known as Fula, who Snorri says is associated with virginity, to warn Gerdr that he should not trust a stranger who comes to his land 
who no dog will attack. So sure enough, Odin shows up soon in his Gandalf-like disguise, calling himself Grimnir. A Grimnir uh, can be read as masked one. The basic sense is of a face that's obscured, so I translate this as shadowed face in my translation. Sure enough, no dog will attack Grimnir, so Gerdr imprisons him between two fires and starves him for eight nights. Now, after eight nights of starvation, Agnar, who is the name of Gerdr's little son, apparently named after Gerdr's brother, who he betrayed, this young Agnar comes to Odin or Grimnir and gives him a drink of mead. Odin drinks and says, no one will ever receive a better reward for a drink of mead than this. And then he begins to seemingly have visions of other worlds. And he talks about uh, some of these visions that he has of Oskarder and other parts of the Norse cosmos. Famously, he begins talking about the halls where the different gods live. He mentions Thor's Hall at Thruthhamer, which just means strength home. Thruthhamer. He mentions the shadowy god Ullr, who we know very little about, and his home at Idalir. He mentions Sokvabekr, the hall where Odin and a little-known goddess named Soga drink together underwater. He mentions Baldr and his home at Breidablik, wide vision, wide shining. He mentions Thiasi, the giant whose home was at Thrymheimr, and how his daughter Skadi, now married to the god Njordr, lives there. He mentions Heimdallr and his home at Himenbjörg, Heaven Cliff. He mentions Freya and her home at Folkvanger, and how Freya takes half of the dead who fall in battle. Grimnismol is actually the origin of that remark. Snorri quotes it as well. So ultimately, it's really just Grimnismol that is our, our attestation to this notion that Freya takes half of the dead. We don't know what she does with them. He also mentions Forseti, Baldr's son, and his hall at Glitnir. He mentions Njordr and his hall at Noatun, and Njordr is often associated with uh, the name of Noatun. And famously, Odin describes Valhol, his own hall, the Hall of the Slain. The description of Valhol is a little bit broken up into different sections. He sort of dips back in and out of talking about Valhol. But the main part of the description is in uh, stanzas 8 to 10, and then stanza 18, and then stanza 24 to 26. And I'm going to read those now for you in Old Norse and then in my English translation. Glas hemr heter en femti thar er in gul bjarta valhol vid of thrumir. En thar hofter kis ferjandag vopen dauda vera. Mjok er auðkent þeim er til Odens koma, sal kenni at sjól. Skoftum er ran reft, skjöldum er salder þakkatur, brynjum um becki strót. Mjok er auðkent þeim er til Odens koma, sal kenni at sjól. Vargur hangir fyrir vestan dyr, og drupir orn yfir. Ann hrimnir lætar í eld hrimni sæ hrimni sóðin, fleska bæðts, en þatt fóri vittu við kvatt einherjar alask. 500 dóra og um fjórum tögum svo hygg ekk at valhólu vera. 800 einherja ganga sen úr einum dórum, þó er þær fara að vittni að vega. Heiðrún heitir geit er stendur hólu og herja fóðurs og bítur af læras limu. Skapt kér fylla Hon skal en skira mjadar, kno at su veg vanask. Ekthit nir heitir hjörtur er stendur a hullu herja fóðurs og bítur af læres limum. En af hans hornum drippur í hvergelmi þaða egu vótin ól vega. In English that is. A fifth, a fifth land is Gladsheim, where gold bright wide Valhalla stands. 
That is where Odin chooses from the men killed by weapons every day. Valhalla is easily recognized if one comes to see it. The hall is held up by spear shafts, it is roofed by shields, chain mail is on the benches. Valhalla is easily recognized if one comes to see it. A wolf hangs above the western door, and an eagle above him. Anhrimnir, the cook, lets the pork from Sahrimnir cook in the cauldron Eldhrimnir. There is no better meat, and there are few who know what the Ein Heriar eat. The Ein Heriar are the fallen champions who live in Valhalla. I think Valhalla has 640 doors if all are counted. 800 Ein Heriar will walk through each when the day comes to fight Fenrir. There is a goat named Heidrun who stands on Odin's hall and gnaws the limbs of the tree Laurel. That goat fills Valhalla's cups with bright mead from her udders and that drink will never diminish. There is a stag named Eikthirnir who stands on Odin's hall and gnaws the limbs of the tree Laurel. Drops fall from his horns into the well of Huergelnir. That is the origin of all the rivers. And then in stanza 27 through 28, following that, he names the rivers, not many of which we can connect with the names of real rivers. And then he picks that river catalog up again in stanza 30. Maybe not as long as the catalog of dwarves in Volospa, but long. In addition to describing the names of these halls and giving small bits of information about them, Odin also paints a little bit of a picture about his life in Valhall Forest in sentences 19 and 20, where he mentions his wolves and ravens. Gera ukreka, sedr guntamadr, hrodegr herjafodr, en vidvin eit vopen govagr odin ad libir. Hugen och munin flyga skerjan dag, jormen grund ivir. Omk ek of hugen att han apter ne komit, to sjomk mer um munin. Battle-winning Odin feeds his tamed wolves, Geri and Freki, but for his part, weapon-loving Odin lives on wine alone. Thought and memory, my ravens, fly every day, the whole world over. Each day I fear that thought might not return, but I fear more for memory. Sometimes the names of Odin's ravens are seen in their Old Norse form, Hugin and Munin. These literally mean thought and memory. By the way, the difference between the form of their names with two ends Hugen, Munin at the end, and one in at the end, Hugen, Munin, comes from a tradition of Old Norse translators removing the in or r that usually ends masculine names uh, when they are the subject of a verb. So the root of the name Hugen or Munin just has one in at the end, and the second end is the uh, subject form. If you look at the uh, annotation, that has uh, the stanza from Green and Small, you'll see that the first time Hugen and Munin are mentioned, they have two ends because of the subject they're flying. And the second time they're mentioned, they have one end at the end of their name because he's talking about how he fears for them. They're not the subject of the verb. Another side note that I might make about uh, the description of Valhalla is that Old Norse often uses hundred and thousand as base 12. So, 100 actually means 120, 1,000 actually means 1,200, and that's how I translate them. So that's why I give you, uh, rather than 540 doors in Valhalla, I translate that as 640 because I'm translating the hundreds as actually meaning 120. So that's the difference between me and some other translators. Now having talked about the halls of the different gods and having talked about Valhalla, Odin also describes the tree Yggdrasil the ash tree that connects the various uh, worlds of Norse myth. In stanzas 31 to 34, we see this description of Yggdrasil, or rather stanzas 31 to 35. I'll read those now in Old Norse and in English. Thryor rutter standa o thryo vega undan aski Yggdrasils. Hel byr under eni, anari hrim thursar, thridju menskir men. Rata toskur etja ikorni, er renna skal at aski Yggdrasils. Arnar orð han skal ovan vera, og segja nidhogbi nidur. 
Ertir, Er og Fjórir, der er af Hevingar og Gag Holsirk Daga, Doen og Dvalen, Dunor og Durathror. Ormar Fleiri liggja under Aski Yggdrasils en tat o Hiki Hver Osvidra Apa. Goen og Moen, der eru Gravvitnis Sinir, Gråbakker og Gravvolver. Opnir og Svopnir hik ek at Askeli meds Christum Mol. Askar Yggdrasils, dri gir ervidi mera en men viti. Hjortur bitter ovan en og hlidu funar. Skerðir nidhókur nedhan. Beneath the tree Yggdrasil are three roots which grow in three directions. Hell is beneath one, Jotunheim beneath another, Midgard is beneath the third. A squirrel is named Ratatosk, he runs along the trunk of Yggdrasil. He takes the words of the eagle, tells his insults to Nidhogg below. There are four deer who stretch out their necks and eat the leaves of Yggdrasil. Doan and Falun, Dunor and Durathror. No fool has ever guessed how many serpents lie beneath Yggdrasil. I think that Goan and Moan, Grobak and Goravulu, Opnir and Svopnir, sons of the snake Gravvitnir, will always gnaw that tree's roots. The tree Yggdrasil endures more pain than any men guess. It's eaten from above by the deer, on the side by rot, from beneath by serpents. And notice that here he mentions three roots, and he specifically mentions the ones that go into Hel, Jotunheim, and Midgard. He, there is also clearly a root that goes into Osgard, because that's mentioned elsewhere as where the Well of the Fates, the Urdarbrunner, is located. So then, Odin describes some other, what you might call, mythological trivia. He gives the names of some Valkyries. He uh, talks a little bit in very, very elusive terms about the creation. And he talks about the the wolves that follow the moons and things like this. And this is often where Snorri gets the names of creatures that he mentions in his prose edda when he's sort of fleshing out the Norse cosmological world. But one of the most interesting and famous parts of Grimnismal is Odin's names. Toward the end of this rapturous vision in which Odin is talking about the different uh, visions that he has of of the Norse cosmological universe, he starts giving his own names, the various names he's taken in disguise. And these take up stanzas 46 through 50, and then he picks up again his names in stanza 54, which is the last poetic edda of Grimness, the last poetic stanza of Grimnismal. So I'm going to read those now for you in Old Norse and then in English. Hetum Grimur, Hetum Gangleri, Herian och Hjomberi, Thekr och Thridi, Thunder och Udr, Helblendi och Hor, Sadr och Svipal och Sangetal, Hertetr och Nekar, Billoiger, Bolloiger, Bolverker, Fjolnir, Grimur och Grimnir, Glapsvidr och Fjolsvidr, Sidhotr, Sidskekr, Sigfodr, Hnikudr, Alfodr, Balfodr, Atrider og Þvarbatyr. Enu nafni hettum aldregi, síst ek með hórkum hór. Grimni meg hettu at geradar, en jók at osmundar, en þó kjalar er ek jóka dró. Þrór þingum at, oski og ómi, javn hór og divlendi, gondlir og horbarður með gódum. Svíður og svíðrir er ek hett at sokmimis, og duld ek þann en afna jóttum. Þór ek midvitnis vark ens mera búrar, orðin ein bani. Óðin ek nú heiti, ykkur ek óðan hett, hettum þundur fyrir það. Vakar og skilvingur, vofður og hróftatýr, geldur og jókur með góðum, ofnir og svófnir er ek hygg að ordnir sé, allir af einum mér. I have called myself Grim, I have called myself Wanderer, Warrior, and Helmet Wearer, Famed One and Third One, Thunder and Wave, Hellblind and One-Eye, Truth and Swift and True Father, Battle Mary, Battle Stirrer, Curse-Eye and Fire-Eye, Evildoer, Spellcaster, 
masked and shattered face, fool and wise man, long hat and long beard, victory father and war ready, all father, war father, rope rider and hanged god. I have never been known by just one name since I first walked among men. They called me shattered face here at Geros place, but gelding at Osman's. They called me driver when I pulled the sleds and mighty at the assembly. Among the gods I'm called wish granter, speaker, just as high, shield shaker, wand bearer, graybeard. Wise and wisdom granter were my names at Sokmimir's hall when I deceived that old giant and I killed his famous son. I was his killer. Odin is my name, but before they called me terror, and thunder before that, and waker, and killer, and confuser, and orator god, heat maker, sleep maker, both gelding and father. I think all these names were used for me alone. Putting the lie to the time in Horbazlod, where Odin says that he never lies about his name. Notice that in Horbazlod, that other poem in the Poetic Edda, one of the names he uses is Horbather, which he mentions here in Grimnir, his disguise, uh, which name means Greybeard. Now having revealed himself, Gerdr, who has had him tortured, realizes that this is Odin and steps forward apparently to try to free him from the torture that he's put him into. But when he steps off of his throne, his sword falls out of its scabbard and he falls onto the sword and dies. And then Agnar, who was generous to Odin, becomes king for a long time after that. So that is a quick summary and review of the poem Grimnismal. I hope that you'll consider looking for my translation of the Poetic Edda and checking out for yourself if you haven't yet. And also I hope that you'll look at some of my other videos on this channel which deal with other subjects in Norse mythology, the history of the Norse language, even the history of the English language, and some other general linguistics topics. I also have a Patreon page if you would be interested in helping me continue this free series of videos that I make because I don't think that information does anyone any good hidden in an ivory tower or behind archaic language. For now, I'm wishing you all the best.